be a good boy. I am going out now to mail this letter and get some more feathers. The Beverly Hillbillies, a sitcom that debuted in the 1960s, quickly became an unexpected television sensation. Charting the journey of the Clampett family from their humble beginnings to the affluent community of Beverly Hills, the show captured the hearts of viewers, securing a spot in households across the nation. Its catchy theme song, recounting the tale of newfound wealth from oil-dubbed Texas tea, became widely recognizable. The series' swift ascent to the top of the ratings, a position it held steadfastly for two years, is a record yet to be surpassed, marking its unique place in television history. Yes, I know, I know. Oh, Mrs. Smith Bandish, don't forget you promised to let my wife wash dishes too. Oh, I the Beverly Hillbillies, which premiered in 1962, experienced a meteoric rise in popularity, captivating audiences across the United States. Within just three weeks of its first episode, the show soared to the top of the television ratings, a clear indicator of its widespread appeal. This remarkable achievement was not fleeting. The series held on to the number one spot for an impressive two-year span. The show's success was a testament to its engaging content and the public's favorable reception, reflecting the cultural zeitgeist of the era. The Beverly Hillbillies became a defining television series of its time, leaving a lasting impression on the landscape of American entertainment. <laughs> Jed, you go off there and do your duty to your female cousins. The television series The Beverly Hillbillies, which debuted in 1962, encountered a significant copyright issue when CBS did not renew the copyright for the initial season and portions of the second season. This oversight led to those episodes falling into the public domain, allowing various distributors to release them with generic music, replacing the original score. This situation is unique in television history as it allowed for widespread distribution and access to these episodes, contrasting with the typical tight control networks maintain over their content. The lapse in copyright protection has enabled fans and audiences to view these episodes freely, albeit with the altered music which differs from the original broadcast versions. This your fur coat? Your mink? For keeps, I sure would appreciate it. Buddy Epson, known for his role in Breakfast at Tiffany's, was selected to portray Jed Clampett in the 1962 television series The Beverly Hillbillies. His previous performance influenced the casting decision as producers sought an actor who could bring depth and intelligence to the character. Epson's interpretation of Jed Clampett was intentional. He aimed to avoid portraying him as naive, preferring instead a portrayal of wisdom and shrewdness. This approach to the character necessitated a balance in the show's dynamic, leading to the creation of another character, Jethro, who would deliver the less informed lines. This decision was pivotal in shaping the interactions and comedy within the series, as it allowed for a contrast between the characters' levels of understanding and perception of the world around them. Yes? Oh, hello, Margaret. In the 1962 television series, The Beverly Hillbillies, a significant aspect of the production involved the use of a mansion for exterior shots. This mansion was owned by Arnold Kirkaby. The production team entered into an agreement with Kirkaby which stipulated that the team was responsible for cleaning up the premises after filming each episode. Additionally, the agreement mandated that the address of the mansion remain a secret to ensure privacy and security. This arrangement was crucial for maintaining the integrity of the site while allowing the show to depict the lavish lifestyle of the Clampett family around which the series revolved. It isn't necessary, and I know Mother will approve my choice. Now, you don't have to give me your answer immediately. You just think it over. And In the television series, The Beverly Hillbillies, Donna Douglas portrayed Ellie Mae Clampett, a character known for her warmth and charm. At the conclusion of each episode, Ellie Mae would address the audience directly, though she was not seen on screen. Her voice conveyed gratitude to the viewers for their company, and she would inform them about the upcoming episode, including its airtime. This closing line became a signature element of the show, creating a personal connection with the audience and building anticipation for future episodes. It was a unique touch that added to the show's homey and inviting atmosphere, making the viewers feel like part of the Clampett family. You're nothing but a two-timer, Homer Winch. Girl told me In the 1962 television series, The Beverly Hillbillies, Irene Ryan secured the role of Granny through a recommendation from B. Benaderet. 
Despite circulating rumors, Ryan's screen test dispelled any doubts about her age in comparison to her co-star Donna Douglas, proving that she was indeed the right fit for the character. Her portrayal of Granny became one of the defining elements of the show, contributing significantly to its humor and success. Ryan's performance showcased her talent and became a memorable aspect of her acting career. Oh, where is he? Oh, I tried to stay away, but I could not. He's mine and no other. In the television series, The Beverly Hillbillies, the character relationships, particularly between Raymond Bailey and Nancy Culp, were notable. Raymond Bailey portrayed the role of Milburn Drysdale, a banker who becomes entwined with the Clampett family after they move to Beverly Hills. Nancy Culp played the part of Miss Jane Hathaway, Mr. Drysdale's loyal and efficient secretary. Off screen, the actors shared a unique bond. Bailey, who faced the challenges of Alzheimer's disease, became more reclusive as his condition progressed. Despite his withdrawal from public life and the entertainment community, Nancy Culp remained a steadfast visitor and friend, providing companionship and support during his time of need. Their off-screen relationship reflected a deep level of care and respect, which added a layer of authenticity to their on-screen chemistry and interactions. Come, fair maiden. And I shall sing of your golden tresses and your azure eyes and your skin of alabaster. The 1962 television series, The Beverly Hillbillies, is notable for its opening credits, which prominently featured sponsorship from well-known brands. This early form of product placement was a strategic move, showcasing products such as Kellogg's Corn Flakes and Winston Cigarettes. These brands were integrated into the opening sequence, which not only served as an introduction to the show, but also acted as a commercial platform reflecting the advertising strategies of the time. The inclusion of sponsors in the opening credits was a common practice and played a significant role in the financial support of television programming during that era. Happy day! Greetings all! Margaret, I've asked you not to barge in here while I'm working. Oh, okay. The Beverly Hillbillies, a television series that debuted in 1962, marked a significant shift in its production as it moved to color broadcasts with the start of its fourth season. This transition was a reflection of the technological advancements of the time, allowing for a more vibrant presentation of the show's content. The first episode to be broadcast in color aired on September 15, 1965, setting a new standard for the series and aligning with the industry's gradual shift towards color programming. This change offered viewers a fresh perspective on the show's visual storytelling, enhancing the viewing experience and bringing the characters and their antics to life in a way that black and white broadcasts could not. The move to color episodes also represented the show's adaptability and its commitment to staying current with the evolving preferences of its audience. You know his wife. <laughs> the television series The Beverly Hillbillies, which debuted in 1962, featured a fictional financial institution known as the Commerce Bank of Beverly Hills. This bank played a pivotal role in the storyline as it managed the unexpected wealth of the Clampett family, who moved to Beverly Hills after striking oil on their land. The creation of this bank within the show was not just a random choice. It was a deliberate nod to the real Commerce Bank located in Kansas City. The show's creator drew inspiration from the Commerce Bank near where they grew up, infusing a sense of authenticity and personal touch to the narrative. The bank in the series symbolizes the intersection of rural simplicity and urban sophistication, highlighting the cultural contrasts that drive the show's humor and plot. It serves as a backdrop for many of the series' comedic situations, where the down-to-earth Clampets interact with the more polished bank employees and city dwellers, often leading to humorous misunderstandings and social commentary. Well, let's go home! <laughs> Listen. The television series The Beverly Hillbillies initially had the working title The Hillbillies of Beverly Hills for its pilot episode. Accompanying the pilot, the theme song titled Banjo Signal was used. However, starting from the second episode, both the title and the theme song were changed. The new title, which remained for the rest of the series, became simply The Beverly Hillbillies and the theme song that became synonymous with the show was introduced. This catchy tune, known for its banjo melody, set the tone for the comedic adventures of the Clampett family after striking oil and moving to Beverly Hills. 
the change from the original title and theme song was made to better reflect the humor and setting of the series, which revolved around the contrast between the simple, rural ways of the Clampets and the sophisticated urban environment of Beverly Hills. The show became a significant part of American television history, known for its humorous take on social class and cultural clash. I was talking to before. Yeah, I'm afraid I am. Well, then you put me through to the same butcher shop I was talking to. In the 1962 television series The Beverly Hillbillies, Donna Douglas portrayed Ellie Mae, a character with a rich backstory that resonated with audiences. Before her role as Ellie Mae, Donna Douglas was known as a young mother and former Miss New Orleans. Her journey to stardom began with regional beauty pageant victories, which opened doors to more significant acting opportunities. Among her notable roles was an appearance in the acclaimed television series The Twilight Zone, showcasing her acting skills and marking her transition from pageantry to the performing arts. This experience paved the way for her casting in The Beverly Hillbillies, where she brought Ellie Mae to life, a character that would become one of the most beloved figures in American television history. It would be more effective if I made an entrance. <laughs> Entrance? Yes, I'll come down. In the television series The Beverly Hillbillies, which debuted in 1962, a narrative circulated suggesting a surprising age relationship between two of the show's stars. The rumor claimed that Irene Ryan, who portrayed the character Granny, was actually younger than Donna Douglas, who played Ellie Mae, and that Ryan used makeup to appear significantly older. However, this rumor was unfounded. Irene Ryan was indeed the elder of the two actresses, having been born in 92 while Donna Douglas was born in 1932. The 30 year age difference between the two was consistent with their on-screen roles, despite the misleading rumors that suggested otherwise. The show itself became a beloved classic with the characters of Granny and Ellie may becoming particularly memorable to audiences for their distinctive personalities and the comedic chemistry they shared. Oh, I'm sorry, you've all finished. Go right ahead and chuck it 